In this lesson, we will learn more about QoS in MQTT. Let's start with a brief review of the basic concepts of QoS. QoS is an acronym for quality of service. MQTT defines three levels of QoS, 0, 1, and 2, which correspond to different message reliability. QoS 0, at most once delivery, provides a message reliability guarantee consistent with the underlying network, so message loss may occur. QoS 1, at least once delivery, where messages are assured to arrive but may arrive multiple times. QoS 2, exactly once delivery, where messages are assured to arrive and will not be duplicated. As the QoS level from low to high, it not only improves message reliability, but also increases the handshake overhead. So higher QoS levels impose greater performance costs on message senders and receivers. This requires us to choose the appropriate QoS level based on actual circumstances, rather than always opting for QoS 2. Next, let's explore the message exchange processes for each QoS level in NQTT and how they achieve reliability guarantees. The first is QoS 0, the lowest QoS level without any additional mechanism. The sender does not need to wait for confirmation and does not need to retransmit. For the receiver, the message arrives at most once. So if the network connection is interrupted during the transmission, the message will be lost, but neither the sender nor the receiver will be aware of it. This lack of reliability is unacceptable in many scenarios. To ensure that the message arrives at the peer, QoS1 introduces the retransmission mechanism. When using QoS1, each published packet must have a publish act packet from the peer as a response. If no response has been received, the sender will retransmit the corresponding published packet. This means that the sender must store these unconfirmed messages until the response is received. Another difference between QoS1 and QoS0 is that we need to set the packet ID field in the packet, which is used to uniquely identify the current published packet and the publish act packet responded by the receiver will contain the same packet ID as the received publish packet. So the sender can know which message has arrived at the peer, and then it can delete this message. In this way, we ensure the arrival of QoS1 messages, but this also results in duplicate message arrivals. When the sender retransmits the message because it has not received the response, it is possible that the receiver has received the message and replied with the response message but the response message may be lost due to the network disconnection. So in this case, the sender retransmits the message, and for the receiver, it means receiving the same message multiple times. And at the protocol layer, we cannot deduplicate these messages. Although the sender will set the DUP flag in the published packet to one during retransmission, indicating that this is a retransmitted message. But for the receiver, it cannot be assumed that it has received this message before it must treat it as a new message. This is because the receiver may encounter the following two scenarios. In the first case, the message has arrived at the peer, but the sender retransmitted the published packet due to not receiving the response. The retransmitted packet has the same packet ID as the original packet, and a DUP flag is also set to one. In this case, the second message received by the receiver is indeed a duplicate message. But in the second case, the first message has been delivered, so packet ID 1024 becomes available again. Then the sender uses this packet ID again to send a new published packet, but the message failed to arrive at the peer this time, so the sender retransmitted the published packet. This packet has the same packet ID as the first packet, and the DUP is one, but it is a new message. The receiver cannot distinguish between these two situations, so it can only treat all these published packets as new messages. It should be noted that here we only talk about the message from the sender to the receiver, such as from the publisher to the server. More messages are sent from the publisher to the subscriber in actual use. So we may encounter the situation, the server has received duplicate messages from the publisher. Since the duplication is impossible, the server can only forward them as new messages. However, retransmission occurred again when forwarding these messages to the subscriber, causing the duplicate message to arrive multiple times. In this example, although the publisher intends to publish only one message, 
the receiver ends up receiving three identical messages. While this situation is rare, it may happen on poor network quality. This is a side effect of QoS1 guaranteeing message arrival. In many cases, we don't want to receive duplicate messages, which may cause some critical commands to be executed multiple times, leading to unexpected results. For example, I paid for a mobile phone but was charged twice. Although we cannot avoid the duplication of QoS1 messages at the protocol layer, we can deduplicate QoS1 messages at the application layer. A commonly used and simple method is to include a timestamp or a monotonically increasing count in the payload of each published packet so that the upper layer application can determine whether a message is new by comparing the timestamp of the currently received message with the timestamp of the last received message. Another point we need to understand is that although retransmission occurs, it does not mean that the messages will arrive out of order. Specifically, suppose we send three messages A, B, and C in order. Even if retransmission occurs, the order in which the final messages arrive at the peer can only be A, A, B, C, or A, B, A, B, C, and so on. It cannot be a case like B, A, C. So as long as we complete the deduplication of the message correctly, we can get the same messages as sent originally. However, not everyone has the ability to deduplicate or is willing to implement a deduplication mechanism. So MQTT introduces QoS2. QoS2 ensures message delivery without duplication, but it has the most complex message interaction process among the three QoS levels. To complete the delivery of QoS2 messages, the sender and receiver must perform at least two request and response exchanges, which also brings high performance overhead for QoS2 messages. QoS2 requires four types of packets, publish, Publish Receive, Publish Release, and Publish Complete. The role of Publish Receive is similar to that of Publish Act, which is used to respond to published packets. The difference is that Publish Receive is used for QoS2, while Publish Act is used for QoS1. QoS2 ensures the message arrives by utilizing Publish and Publish Receive packets, and its principle is the same as QoS1. We won't repeat the details. The additional flow of publish release and publish complete packets introduced by QoS2 is the key to avoiding message duplication. QoS2 stipulates that the sender can retransmit the publish packet only before receiving the publish receive packet. Once the publish receive packet is received and the publish release packet is sent, the sender enters the packet ID release process. Before receiving the publish complete response from the peer, the sender can neither use this packet ID to retransmit the message nor use it to publish new messages. Only after receiving the publish complete response can the sender continue using this packet ID to send new messages. So for the receiver, the publish release packet can be used as the boundary, and all published packets that arrive before the publish release packet must be duplicated. And all published packets that arrive after the publish release packet are all new messages. With this premise, the receiver can easily deduplicate QoS2 messages at the protocol layer. But we also notice that if the receiver must wait until replying with the publish complete packet before forwarding the message to upper layer applications, then the message's real-time nature will be significantly affected when the network is not good. So MQTT allows a receiver to distribute the message upstream when it receives the publish packet for the first time. Of course, as long as the message is distributed once, the receiver cannot distribute it again when the retransmitted message arrives. Compared with the former, this distribution strategy can reduce the latency by one round-trip time. Although QoS2 can guarantee both the arrival of messages and the non-duplication of messages, NQTT does not abandon QoS0 and 1. This is because the capabilities of QoS2 come at the cost of performance, and in some scenarios, the fire and forget nature of QoS0 may align better with our needs. So NQTT finally provides these three QoS levels, and we need to select the appropriate QoS level in a reasoned manner. Finally, let's summarize. The disadvantage of QoS0 is that messages may be lost, and the frequency of message loss depends on the network environment. It may cause us to miss messages during disconnection, but the advantage is that it offers high delivery efficiency. 
so we can choose to use QoS0 to transmit some high-frequency and less critical data, such as periodically updated sensor readings. Even if we miss a few cycles of data, it can be accepted. QoS1 ensures the arrival of messages, so it is suitable for transmitting essential data, such as critical commands and important real-time states. However, QoS1 may also cause message duplication. So when we choose to use QoS1, we also need to be able to handle or allow duplicate messages. The latter has more limitations in practical applications and is usually only suitable for some situations where absolute states are set. For example, we need to scan each package that is ready to be stored in the warehouse, and the terminal will send the status message arrived in the warehouse to the server, which will forward it to the backend application service to update the status. In this scenario, we need to ensure that state change messages arrive, and that duplicate arrivals do not cause errors. So using QoS1 is very appropriate. QoS2 can guarantee the arrival of messages and ensure that messages will not be duplicated, but it incurs the highest transmission cost. The throughput that QoS2 can achieve is generally only about half that of QoS0. If we are not willing to deduplicate ourselves and can accept the additional overhead brought by QoS2, then it will be a suitable choice. Usually, we will use QoS2 more in industry scenarios that require high message reliability, such as finance and aviation. That's all for this lesson. Thanks for watching.